So I'm gonna kind of try to explain myself a little bit. This year, gaming hasn't really been all that great to me. I don't know why. Um, maybe I'm just super negative about it, but kind of hear me out. So the only game I really liked uh, in its entirety was Zelda. That, but I'm a big Zelda fan anyway. It's the only reason why I bought a Nintendo Switch was to be able to still play Zelda games. And honestly, I'm kind of uh, hyped to see where they can even go from here. So while everybody's been praising them, I will use like Final Fantasy 16 as an example. And I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but I mean, I didn't buy a Final Fantasy game to play Devil May Cry. That's that's basically all it was. It's, it's, I mean, the end fight was... It, it, everything looked great. It was a beautiful game. But it felt more linear and very stale compared to the other ones I've played. While even the older ones feel more lived in and bigger and broader. And especially for their time being so, I mean, 20 years ago, they just felt bigger. And I feel like they're regressing even more. A lot of people said it was better than, you know, uh, what they did with 15. And I, I don't agree. The only good thing that has come from this year is going to be like Cyberpunk. Uh, the 2.0 update. Plus, I'm about to play the DLC, but... I'm so backlogged on games. So while I'm still trying to finish like Assassin's Creed Valhalla right now so I can play the new Mirage. A lot of people didn't like Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla anyway. They said the mechanics were terrible. They didn't like them. I didn't hate them. Uh, the only thing I hate about it is those huge level gaps that you have to go through in like power level or pay for, you know, a DLC or something that gives you the level. That's the only thing I can agree on is that, that I think that the power scaling parts of it are horrible that's just the only thing that i think was bad the rest of the games were still good they looked good they played good i i didn't hate them i mean i didn't play them day one so maybe there's a lot that i'm missing there but this year a lot of games have just let me down um in the last few years actually gaming has let me down in general with all those day one patches that are fixing huge bugs that they're releasing which that's you know that's a common thing now which i think is just horrible i think gaming in itself has just become stale and stagnant and regardless I'm hoping next year will be a lot better. And yes, I'm going to be one of those little fanboys. Naruto's got a new fighting, um, a new game coming out. We'll say new. It's just a reskin and a redo of all of the, uh, you know, all the other games, all three or all four of them. It's going to be mashed into one. It's going to have all the characters, a little bit of an added story, I believe. But in general, it's just going to be. It's supposed to change it up just a little bit, like it does with every game. I'm just a huge fanboy. I'm probably not going to be able to review anything on that because I would be completely biased if I didn't tell you now. I, I'm going to love it regardless. Now, let's wait to be seen. Um, there's a few games that's coming out this year that I'm waiting on. I'm one of the few fanboys of Call of Duty anyway. Everybody's complaining that's a $70 DLC. I, I think people forget there's a campaign. And a lot of people are like, oh man, the campaign, it's all about the online. There was a time when I remember where, it, you know, the campaign actually mattered. People still like the old one because of the campaign. The online was just good. This the, the new online isn't just that it's actually terrible. It's just there's a lot of people that do not play for the campaign. So they just only see the online. So everything looks so shorthanded. Now, obviously, online is going to be their huge winner considering that's where they make a lot of their money anyway. But, I mean, it's disingenuous to me if you're going to talk about Call of Duty in a sense that, oh, it's just going to be horrible online when there's also still a decent campaign on it. And actually a good one. I like the last one. It was tr tremendous. The third one, I'm, I can't wait to see what they're going to do with Makarov, which I, that was a good villain. I loved him. And yes, gaming as a whole, I don't know what's going to be in the foreseeable future. There's supposed to be a new Ghost game, a uh, Ghost of Tsushima, not Call of Duty. And we ain't going to get that lucky. Now, I'm pretty stoked about the new Final Fantasy uh, Rebirth. I think that's going to be really good. Um, now, they're... I'm still in a debate with a buddy of mine on how good is the story really. I've even so much as bought the actual Steelbox series. Uh, the st sorry, still box edition of it. I mean, Final Fantasy has been a long time. Uh, it was a mainstay in my life. That was the turning point was seven. That was the first time I ever played a Final Fantasy game, and it made me buy six. Six was amazing. I think six is my favorite. And talking about any upcoming games, and actually, like say Final Fantasy being an older game, I think we need a new Castlevania. I, I think we need a good, no, uh, you know, a good fashion Metroidvania Castlevania game. We haven't seen that in a long time. One of my favorite games of all time is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And, by the way, that's supposed to be coming up in the Netflix series, and I hope they do it justice. Um, they did the last series, uh, the four seasons they had, and it was wonderful. I don't have Netflix. I'm probably not going to get it. I'm just going to wait until I can buy it on Amazon, and I'll watch it then. But I'm ready to see what Richter can do. Um, 
And unfortunately, as you've probably seen this uh, far into the video, it's not a whole lot of, other than I'm just talking about video games right now. I'm hoping that the upcoming video game list that's coming up, uh, all the games on it, I hope it does better this year. Maybe I just haven't had a good year or these games just weren't meant for me. Um, but, you know, if you've played them and you enjoyed them, and I'm happy, you know, people did. A lot of the games, I don't think it was this year, but it was last year was like Back for Blood. It was horrible. It just seemed like they put too much into a game that was pretty simple to begin with. The concept, at least. And then there's Suicide Squad, which I don't remember the release date on. I don't even know if it's pre-orderable. I haven't looked into it. Once I found out it was a live, a live service game, which is something I think is horrible. It's good if they're so far and in between, but at this point, they're everywhere. They're just, it's every damn game that comes out, they want live service. I don't know whose cock they're sucking to keep this going. The fact that so many people are just willing to just gobble that thing down to keep giving them money for mediocre stuff like that, live service games, I don't I don't see how it's going to work on every single game that comes out. So I'm going to pick at Diablo 4 for a minute, and it's going to be a long minute, so uh, buckle up, and I hope you understand that uh, this is coming from a fan of 3. I, did, I didn't like it after uh, pretty much the post-game launch. Um... I was running a, a few, uh, every class. I was just picking off different ones. I didn't run, you know, these overpowered builds where you have to build up all these, you know, charges and stuff that you always have to do in RPGs. I was just running a simple Barbarian. It was easy. And then there was an update. And the update ruined everything for me. They patched so much stuff. I don't see how you can make a game that is, it's still a single player game. I mean, it's multiplayer based where you can just jump in and out seamlessly. It's supposed to be. But they, they fell so hard doing this. Baldur's Gate 3 did it way better. And I've enjoyed that. And that's not even my style of game. I only actually bought Baldur's Gate 3 to support the people that made it. Because everybody was hating them. If I saw all these, you know, AAA game companies are like, oh, don't let this be, you know... What you should look forward to in the future. This is just too much. This is giving them... That, fuck them. That that was awesome. So uh, yeah, I went ahead and... I bought it just for that reason. But to get back onto the uh, you know Diablo 4 problem... A buddy of mine loves it. He absolutely adores it. He's he's played... I mean, I don't know how many hours into it since his release. And uh, I mean, I'm happy that he's enjoyed it that much. Because um, this... Me and him, that's all we talk about is video games. And for, for the fact that... He hasn't had a game he could just sit down and just play for endless hours on his free time. It's awesome that he found one that he can just pretty much play and not ever lose, you know, he doesn't lose track of it. It's one that he's he's just enjoyed. He, he does all these different builds. He's really good with it. I hated it. I absolutely hated it. Once they started redoing, they patched a bunch of the builds out where you have to do it the way they wanted to play. Basically, they wanted you to... They're kind of forcing you to the multiplayer aspect where you have to do it that way. Unless you're just, as a casual player, let me put it that way. As a casual player, they make it to where you have to kind of force yourself to be on the online play. You can't just play it, play it privately and actually be able to do good. You can pretty much just beat the game and end the story. I didn't like the level scaling. I hate that. So, a lot of my problem with video games where you, this is a big map, so... You start in this one section of the map. The problem with it is, you know, you start level one. So all this area is going to be one. And then as you move through it, you know, the rest of the map is going to increase in level, which that's fine. But what I don't like is where this will keep increasing with your level. Now, maybe there's a setting to fix that, but I haven't found it. And uh, I kind of, I'm already burnt out. I played it, beat it, and didn't care. I haven't picked it back up. Baldur's Gate 3, I pick it up every now and then because I do thoroughly enjoy the fact... A lot of people t have told me that I work with, they were like, oh, well, you need to like look up what you're about to do because you may mess up. I was like, I like the fact that this game is just, you go and do it. There shouldn't be a walkthrough. You should just trial and error. Now, I save scrub like a motherfucker. I'm not going to lie. I have every little choice that I'm like, I don't know if I want to make that choice or it could be a roll of the dice, which everything is. It's the only thing I don't like. I hate rolling dice every five seconds, but... All that is is a visual representation of the same thing you do in like Fallout and you know Skyrim. All those chances of something breaking. Now that's just the roll of the dice. It's a little bit more physical. But overall, I still love the game. And I love the character creation. It's simplified, but yet you still feel distinct enough to be your own character. The massive amounts of choices you have to completing the game. And so far, I haven't seen them patch hardly anything out. They've uh, only allowed you to continue. I think they're enjoying the fact they're watching people just break their game. And it's a massive, massive change 
to what has been coming out. So I take I completely forgot. I take that back. That would be one of the other games that actually is one of my favorites that have come out this year. And the one game I'm kind of looking forward to because it looks kind of uh, it's kind of Sekiro esque, um, Dark Soulsy is going to be the Wukon game. That that I think is going to be amazing. But I just like those type of games. I suck at all of them pretty much. It takes me a while to beat them. The only one that I was good at and I pretty much blindsided just beat was Elden Ring. And I even got a platinum on that, which, I mean, I guess a lot of people probably did. But Elden Ring, from what I heard, is probably the easiest one of them. I, I even beat the uh, Dark Souls 3, which honestly is one of my favorite Souls games. And also, I guess I'll give a little update um, on some of the videos I'm going to be doing. There's a guy uh, named Nicholas Rossi. I'm trying to make sure... He got arrested a little while back. This is just a quick little synopsis. He got arrested a while back. He also, um, he faked his death like in 2020. And they've been dealing with him since 21. As of right now, that's kind of what I'm working on. i got a few other videos that I've been kind of writing down to keep an idea on. And this is just more of an update video and a rant video. And I appreciate any of the views I get. And if uh, people don't like this, I understand. Uh, it's a little different than you, what uh, the last few videos I've done. We're more excited. So you got to excuse me. I'm a little congested as well. I uh, just woke up and the weather's changing out here and it's got me all kind of just fucked. I feel like shit. <laughs> to the fact I'm probably just going to go make me some coffee and go get me a biscuit. It's early in the morning right now. Um, the only good news I have is I put new sheets on my bed. <laughs> and it felt wonderful to go to sleep while I felt like shit. But I'm about to have to go wash up and try to get some of this uh, congestion out. But anyway, if you like me rambling about video games and making absolutely no sense, I appreciate the views. I appreciate the likes. And any comments you want to leave down, you can. Anyway, I'm done ranting. I'm done talking. I think I'm going to go and try to get me something to eat and some coffee and wake up a lot better than what I have now and try to really get all this shit out of my system. So everybody, I hope y'all have a good